Uh, what's going on, everyone? It's Andy Singer with the Heartland Institute, as usual, bringing you more from climaterealism.com. So today I was going to do an internal debate. Do I want to do another video on Gavin Newsom, California, and the wildfires? And no, I, I kind of don't, but I might have to. Or do I want to do a video on ocean acidification? And we have selected ocean acidification. So that is what we're talking about today. But let me just tell you first, I hate that term. And I'm going to get into why I hate that term, because it's meant to mislead you. The mainstream media uses that term to mislead you, and I will get into why. But first, let's actually get into the issue. So, and I ask, how many times have you heard from the mainstream media that ocean acidification is a huge problem? A lot of times, right? Like a lot. I mean, I've heard it so many times. And you know, my friends, they don't really think like me. So they always talk about this as an issue. And that that's fine. But Let's uh let's get into it. So before we talk about actually what's going on with the oceans, let's go into the pH scale so we can set a little background here. Show it, Mr. Producer. All right, so here we are looking at the pH scale. So let's start on the left on the more highly acidic substances. Now, the most acidic with a pH level of zero is battery acid. So yeah, highly acidic. Don't don't touch battery acid. As we move more towards the right, we have lemon juice with a pH of two, soda with a pH of two point five, and acid rain with a pH of four point three. Now, can I just say one thing? Is, is it not weird to anyone that soda is more acidic than acid rain? I mean, it's called acid rain. It's like literally acidic rain. So seriously, when we like drink a Coca-Cola, we're drinking more of an acidic substance than acid rain. It just seems weird to me. Uh, this is not meant to mean anything greater. I'm just saying, and I know most of you agree with me. That's a little weird, right? I mean, it kind of says maybe I shouldn't be drinking soda or I should be drinking acid rain. All right, so with a pH of 5.6, we have clean rain, and now we're getting towards neutral substances. So distilled water has a pH of 7. It is just flat out neutral. It's right in the middle. Let's look at the alkaline substances. All right, so blood has a pH of 7.4, so it's more alkaline. As we continue, we can see that seawater has a pH of 8.1. Now, we're going to talk about this, but let's just keep going. With a pH of 9 is baking soda, 11 is ammonia, 12.6 is bleach, and liquid drain cleaner is a pH of 14. So the most acidic substance is battery acid. The most alkaline substance is liquid drain cleaner. So let me just tell you real quickly that oceans are not all at a pH of H.1. They actually, it's more of a range. And the range is 7.8 to 8.5. But we're talking about the average here. So just what that means is that if someone tells you, oh, no, Andy's wrong. pH of oceans are not 8.1. They'll be like, look at this. This is 7.8. Just say, well, you're talking about one specific area. We're talking about the greater overall, like seawater in general. So, and and this is not just indicative of like ocean water debates. This is indicative of debates in general. People will frequently talk about specific areas to benefit their point. And that's why we want to talk about greater averages. And I've done that too. Like sometimes I'll be like, hey, let's talk about sea level rise in New York. But then I'll, I'll usually follow that up or not usually. I do follow that up by saying, no, here's like the greater land area. Because people can always cherry pick statistics to benefit their case. It's easy. It, it is very easy. Trust me. I studied math. So just don't don't fall for that. But OK, so we're here to talk about the media claims that the ocean is becoming highly acidic. Before we do one more thing, and I ask you this question in the year 1850, if the media is, is saying that the oceans are becoming so much more acidic, what do you think ocean pH level was back then? I mean, if it's becoming so acidic, it must have been way more on the alkaline scale, right? We're at, we're at an average of 8.1 today. So what do you think it was back then? I'm going to give you a few seconds here. It was 8.2. At most, since the year 1850, oceans have become more neutral by 0.1. That's it. That's it. And here's, here's actually what I really want to say. Now, if CNN came on and said, the oceans are moving slightly more neutral, do you think anyone would care? No, no one would care. No one would care if CNN said the ocean is a huge problem on the pH scale. It's moved from 8.2 to 8.1 in the last 170 years because that's not a story. It's, it's literally nothing. And there's more. There's actually more. Ocean health is improved, not harmed by additional carbon dioxide. CO2 is literally phytoplankton food. By increasing CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere, we have more phytoplankton, which is literally the base level of the ocean food chain. So if anything, CO2 actually benefits ocean life. And studies show this. Studies actually show that marine life thrives and enhances itself. 
in elevated CO2 conditions. So the reality is the media will tell you oceans are becoming highly acidic. And what they mean is that in the last 170 years, 170 years, they have moved down 0.1 on the pH scale. And they are not acidic. They are slightly less alkaline. That's it. That's literally it. It is not a crisis. And like everything the media tells us, it's not a crisis. And there are, envi again, there are environmental problems out there. And we should, as climate realists, care about those. But what we don't care about is sensationalized stories that don't matter. Let's, let's actually focus on real environmental problems. Until tomorrow, this is Andy with the Heartland Institute. Peace. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and consider donating to the Heartland Institute to support more vibrant free markets, greater individual liberties, and more videos like this one.